On May 5, 1961, Alan Shepard conducted the first U.S. human space mission, doing a short suborbital mission in a Mercury spacecraft lifted by a Mercury Redstone rocket. Unlike the Soviets, which had conducted their first mission, a fully orbital mission, in April, using the innovative and multi-stage R-7 rocket, the Redstone rocket was, essentially, a modified version of the V-2 rocket developed by German designers and engineers during World War II. However, before either of these firsts for the new superpowers, an old superpower, Britain, would be the first in human spaceflight using the Mega Rock. In the summer of 1945, with the war in Europe over, Allied forces rushed to unravel the secrets of Nazi V-2 rocket designs. As part of Operation Paperclip, U.S. forces aimed to collect all the German rocket scientists they could find, including Werner von Braun. The Soviets captured von Braun's research and test facilities at Penamunde on the Baltic coast, and themselves captured and enlisted German designers and engineers. But they weren't the only ones interested in this work. The French also gathered some 40 German rocket scientists, and the British assembled rockets for a series of test flights. Known as Operation Backfire, the British program involved testing V-2 rockets, sending them to the edge of space. These experiments proved successful and engineers at the British Interplanetary Society in London decided this technology could help them realize their dream of building a manned spaceship. In 1946, Society member, designer, and artist Ralph Smith put forward a detailed proposal to adapt the V-2 missile into a man-carrying rocket that he called the Mega Rock. Though a difficult proposition, Smith's proposal to outfit the boosters with a pair of parachutes, allowing it to descend and be recovered for future use, thereby greatly decreasing the overall cost of the program, the British government approved the project. Work began immediately. Progress was quick, and by early 1949, several test versions of the Mega Rock were ready and sent to the Woomera Test Facility in Southern Australia. Meanwhile, Engineers designed a simple capsule, which, unlike the American Mercury capsule, would not use retro rockets or a separate heat shield. By late December 1949, the capsule was ready and assembled at Woomera. On December 14, 1949, Wing Commander Leonard Cheshire launched atop the Mega Rock on a parabolic trajectory just above 300,000 meters above the Earth. Unlike the 9G launch of the future Mercury Redstone, the Mega Rock launch only ever reached 3Gs, comparatively comfortable. Once in space, the nose cone and fairings pulled away, 
and the capsule separated from the rocket. Confirmed separation. Separation confirmed. Testing rotation. Burst is firing. Turn it around. I can see the clouds over Australia. It's a gorgeous sight. Continuing altitude increase. Moving about now. Maneuvering to see the booster now. Got a 20 meter separation. A cloud cover below. Gorgeous. Continuing to maneuver. I can see the coast. It's a magnificent sight up here. I can see nearly the entire continent. The curvature of the Earth is very visible. Reaching up, Ajay. Descent beginning. Moving to re-entry attitude. Re-entry attitude achieved. After nearly five minutes of weightlessness, the capsule would fall back to Earth. It's a blade of shielding protecting the astronaut from the plasma buildup upon re-entry. Leading to the other team now. The ballistic re-entry would force the astronaut to endure 9 Gs of force before a parachute deployed slowing the craft and allowing it to land softly in the Australian outback. With this successful test, Britain became the undisputed leader in human spaceflight and would usher in, along with the rest of the Labour government's social democratic policies, a new era for a former empire.